Hey there, and welcome to RAM's basic tutorial series. If you need more information about RAM, you can book a demo with our team using the link in the description. You can also create a free RAM account and use the templates below to draw along with me as we go through this tutorial. Let's dive in. All right, so in this tutorial, we're going to talk about blocks, block families, how to edit blocks, override them, and use block libraries. So I'll start by just uh, giving a brief explanation of what blocks are. They're a configuration of your drawing. This can be a technical block, like a title block, a symbol block or annotation, or of course, a furniture person block. The idea is that once you use blocks, you can edit them in batch and add information onto them um, at scale. So we're going to talk today about how to create blocks and uh, manage them. Let's start with just maybe giving a, an example. Once you edit one block, it will edit across all its instances. So if I grab my title block right here, I'll double click it to edit. And any change I make, um, let's for example, add color, with the bucket tool to the frame. Any change I make, like adding a gray frame to my block will be applied to all of its instances across my model, like just happened here. If you want to create a block, you have to draw a shape and save it as a block. So let's create a side table here. Just grab the circle tool and we'll draw a simple circle. Um, maybe let's offset it to give it some detail. Once I've drawn my shape and want to save it as a block, I'm just going to select it. And on the bottom toolbar, you're going to find the block button, which will um, make a block out of it. You saw that it just turned from blue to purple, which indicates that it's a block. Another thing that happened is that it was added to my block library. You can find the block library on the top left right here. And there's my block. The one thing I want to do is change its name uh, and customize it. So let's call this slide table. And we're going to talk soon about other types of blocks and libraries we have here. But for now, I want to show you a bit of how you can edit blocks and override them. So once I copy my block and populate it across my drawing, let's maybe add two side tables here. If you want to change it, you'll double click it to edit. And let's make this small change. For example, we can scale it, we can change its color. You'll see that this will apply throughout all the blocks in my drawing. There you go. If you want to edit this block individually without it affecting the other blocks in RAM, you'd have to make a new block. And a fast way to do this is right click your block and select the make unique option. What happens now is that it made a copy of this block like here, and it will now be edited individually. So if I make any changes, it will apply only to this block. Another method of changing blocks in RAM is overriding them. I want to uh, pan to this area of my model to show you that. You might want to have a block that has different representations, and for that, you can override blocks. So in this case, if I click on this table block, you'll see that other than editing, which was what I was doing with double clicking, I can also select the override option. Let's click override and you'll see that if I go to the layer tab for this block, I'll find everything that it includes. And in this case, I've created a block that can be set either as a four sitting table or extended with more chairs and a longer table. So you'll see here that I can have multiple instances of this block on my canvas. Let's copy it and bring that here for a sec. And when I change the override settings for an individual block, so click this, override it, and then maybe hide the extension, it will not affect the other blocks on my drawing. And this is just a way to have uh, different representations of the same block without having too many different blocks on your drawing. Another example is to do this with uh, the block styles. So let's just quickly see this example with uh, the plant blocks I have here. I have the same plant copied across this garden, sago palm. Let's say I want for my drawing to represent different colors for each plant, but I still want to have the same block represented. So then I can quantify these blocks uh, easily, for example, using Rand's tables. Uh, there's a tutorial about that. So for example, if I select one block, and override it instead of editing it. I can grab its style. You'll see that here. I want to detach the style so it doesn't edit anything in this model that carries this style, which is another concept. Um, and now that I did, I can give each block kind of a little bit of a different color. Um, so this is just to say that when you override your blocks, you can change their style settings. Uh, you can change their appearance if they have multiple layers that you can hide and unhide. Uh, and this is a way for you to manage your blocks 
easily. So having one block that has different representation and in its instances across your model. Another type of block I want to discuss is hosted block. So blocks like windows and doors, the one you can see here, have an insertion point that makes them punch holes within the RAN walls. So I'll just grab a copy of this door uh, as an example. Let's place it here and then let's edit this. You'll see here that this insertion point is what makes the block punch a hole within a wall and you can find that on the top right. So if I click point, this block will no longer be punching a hole within my RAN walls as you can see here. And then if I undo that, so let's click this change it back to an insertion point opening. And now let's grab the store and it will punch a hole in the wall. So if you're creating custom opening blocks like windows and doors, or if you want to make any other, you know, openings in, in your walls, you're welcome to use this option. Let's talk about Rayan's block libraries now and how you can use them and then create your own block libraries. The block library, as you already saw, is on the top left. There is the my blocks, which indicates all the blocks in this current model and the libraries tab. RAN has three types of libraries, my libraries, so personal ones, organization libraries, which is the ones I share with my teammates, and RAN's default block libraries, which contains more than 10K blocks in different sides. So top, side, and front views for creating both floor plans and sections and elevations. Let's review a few just as an example. So you'll see many different use cases, carpets, commercial kitchen, dressing tables. You can use the search bar. And I wanna show you uh, some of Rand's symbol box, for example. So not only furniture, but also um, electrical symbols, HCAV, uh, technical symbols. You're really gonna find a vast variety. So make sure to uh, check this one out with different legends. Let's zoom in and demonstrate how you would use this block library. So I want to add a seating arrangement right here and I'll go and write sofa. And now I can browse the different options I have from RAN. I can drag and drop it onto my canvas. It's already going to be to scale, of course. And then I can rotate it. I can also, as you saw before, edit it to change its color, size, and to use this in a section, I can simply grab this model. So I'll copy it using the CC shortcut. And let's go to section. I'll place it right here. And then I can go to its block definition on the right and change it to the representation I'm looking for. In this case, it's the side view. Uh, let's rotate it and then flip it. And there you go. The next thing I want to show you is how to import your own DWG blocks in RAN and curate your own block libraries. For that, we're going to go to the RAN workspace, which is right here. You can either import DWG files from your workspace or from within a RAN model. Now let's import a DWG file with my blocks and create it into my personal libraries or share it with my team. From your workspace, you can go to the import tab on the right. You'll notice that you can import DWG, DXF, PDF, and image files into RAN. So if you have a supplier's DWG file or previous blocks you want to bring in RAN, all you have to do is click the import button and select that file. In this case, I'm going to import a bunch of tree DWG files. The first step will be to help RAN assess the scale of your model. So some users bring in sitemaps, others bring in design details, and RAN needs to understand what ballpark uh, we're in. Uh, in the case of trees, it's not a precise dimension, but if you're bringing in a furniture block or else, of course, you can scale your file to millimeter precision. So in this case, I'm going to do as indicated and select uh, two points on my canvas. And RAN understands that it has to do somewhat with the, this dimension, but not if it's meters, centimeters, inches, or feet. So this tree top is probably approximately uh, meter 20, uh, so 122 centimeters. And let's click on continue. Now I'm just going to verify that that's the dimension. I'll uh, scroll back in here, grab the dimension tool, and let's verify that that's indeed the case. Yes, it is. Perfect. The next thing I want to do is maybe clean up my file a bit, change its style. So I'm seeing some things I maybe want to uh, exclude. Now, as you'll notice, the blocks you imported as a DWG file are already blocks in RAM as well. So they have this uh, purple uh, color when you hover over them. And if you go to the block library, you're going to find them already within it. So there you go.
You can do things like clean up your block library a bit, manage its styles, change the names of your blocks. Uh, when you import a DWG file, typically it also will carry already the styles of your model. So if I click on one block to edit it and select a style, you see that there is a saved style in my model. And when I edit it one time, it will edit and batch across my model, which is super convenient. So maybe you want to change the trees to a green color or so on and so forth. So that's step one for how to import blocks in RAM. Now let's say that you want to create your custom block library to use across your different models or share it with your team. So other than the blocks you've imported, you can also play some selected blocks from the RAM block library. So just as an example, maybe let's add here uh, some of the rayon trees as well. So I'll, uh, instead of manually search, I'll just write here plants. Um, the reason I might want to do this is because rayon trees also have side and front views as well, right? So if I bring in a few of these planters, we can also bring them already in their other view, uh, but they're going to be available in all views anyway. So just as the example, we might want to add a few side view plants here. All right, let's say I'm happy with this block curation and want to share it as a block library. I'm going to first of all change its name just to indicate that it's a tree library and then go to the share button on the top right. And here I'm going to visit the libraries tab and toggle on the publish blocks. That's it. It's that simple. What I'm going to do now is go back to my main model and you'll see that this model has a tag indicating that it's a block library. So here it is. And this means that if I jump back to the original model we were looking at and I want to grab some of the trees that we've just imported, I'll be able to find this library in my library tab. So I'm going to go to the library tab, my libraries, and there you go, a tree library. We can drag and drop it onto our canvas and of course rescale, change it as needed. And that's it guys, we reviewed how to create a block, use RAN's block libraries, create your own libraries, and import DWG blocks. Hope this tutorial was useful. There's a lot more to learn about blocks, like how to add metadata onto blocks, uh, explore more about how to use styles, so make sure to visit our YouTube channel for more useful information. Thanks for watching this tutorial. If you have any more questions, you're welcome to book a demo with our team by using the link in the description. You can also join our community and of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel to get more videos like this. Have a good one.